Hey! Hey! Hey, wow, well, kids! I'm in here! Can you see me? <laughs> How you doing? Oh, I've just been exploring down here because I've seen some wattle. And it's really cool. And here, there's some animals been digging. So I've just been having a look at this well. But Rachel couldn't get down into this bit because oh, it's a little bit tricky. How are you? Are you good? Hi, mine champs Hornsby. Mine champs Hornsby. How are you? You're first today. First to say hello. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. You are awesome. And we are going to have an awesome day today because today or yesterday was wattle day. The first day of spring in the European calendar. Now, we're in um, Daru country and they have, um, have a brilliant way, the indigenous community have a brilliant way of going about the seasons because our four seasons Hi, really... Honey. Hey, Amy. Hi, hon. We're just talking about the seasons and the way the indigenous people talk about seasons because it's different to us Europeans. So in the Northern Hemisphere, you've got... What, well, what are they? What are the seasons? What do we start with? We start spring. Yeah. What's the next one? It starts with a su. Su, 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 su. Summer. Yes. Summer. Then we've got autumn. Or in America, we've got the fall. And then we've got winter. All right. Now, where we are in New South Wales, in Sydney, we don't really have winters so much because... Hey, Ariel and Lucy. Ariel and Lucy. Hello, you beautiful pair. How are you? Are you good? Well, that's awesome. Happy wattle day for yesterday. Come and have a look at these wattles. Talking of wattles, come and have a look. Over here. They're over here, look. These ones are juniper wattles. There's loads of different varieties and species of wattle. You get like long, dangly, golden, yellowy ones. And these are like little fireworks. These little white puffballs here. And this is a juniper. It's out. It's very spiky. Um, they've got a beautiful little, it's like a firework going off. And it's exploding into spring. It's like an explosion celebration. And here it's very clever. I always tell you plants are clever. And these, these are no exception. So they've got really spiky leaves to stop the big animals eating them. And all the pollen is all on the outside of the flower here in this little puffball. And the nectar that the bees are trying to get is inside. It's brilliant, see? And plants remember that the bees are the ones that pollinate them. And the butterflies and the flies are the ones that pollinate them. So they have to make... Um, it's difficult to get to the nectar so they can then pollinate all the other things. Plants are clever and everybody works reciprocally. Now, look at the... What's the name of the indigenous season? In the indigenous oh, season? oh, I can't say it very well. Is it Ngu, Ngu, Ngula, Ngula? What does it mean? It means cold getting warmer. So it's the cold and getting warmer season. And then you get like hot and dry and then sort of like cold and wet, warm and wet. And all these different things are six. In most indigenous culture, there's six different seasons where in the like northern hemisphere culture, um, there's only four. So it actually makes a lot more sense to use the um, indigenous calendar and um, seasons than it does um, ours in, in Europe. It's like, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Anyway, I digress. But look at this. When it's springtime. Look at all the different shades of green, because what you've got is new bits of plant growing on existing plants. So you've got dark greens, you've got light greens, you've got limey greens. Look at these ones here, look, even on the end of this tree. So this is another, this is a, um, another wattle here. This, it, and look, it's, it's very similar to the juniper wattle, but it's not. But look, this bit, see this bit here, this is new growth. So you've got all these leaves here, these, these stay all year round and then they'll fall off when they get tired. But this is all the new, the new shoots, and you can see just the tiny little bits here, look. See these little tiny ones? And they're very soft. And as these ones they get a bit older and they're a bit higher, they become softer as well, because they don't have to protect themselves as much from the low-eating um, uh, mammals, which is genius. So even down here, look at these ones here, look. So different color. So plants can be so clever because some plants struggle with making flowers or get, getting attention. So do you know what they do? Their early leaves are actually a different colour to actually make out their flowers. That is genius. Told you, plants are clever. Now, it's brilliant because the, um, the flowering season is really, really quite short here in um, Australia. 
So all the, the everything has just gone nuts because it's got really warm and everything. Once that button's been depressed, the um, all the they just don't the plants just they can't go back. So they all the flowers are coming out, all the new leaves are coming out, and you can see through these little sparkles of oh, there's some like reds in here. I'm not going to go down into it. It's a bit long grass and a bit sneaky. But oh, look over here! Come here, come here. here. Where are we going? Here. No, okay, this way, this way, this way. Look at this. Look at this. Now, this is awesome. Look at these beautiful. This is a golden pea plant. I love these. I love pea plants. Such a funny little flower. Gorgeous little thing. I don't think you can eat these ones, though. But it just looks the same as the pea plant. And in my latest lesson plan, um, sowing the seeds, because um, I keep... I'm doing a whole thing on um, how to plant seeds and how to look at them. And uh, we're growing some beans and um, peas in those. Really, really cool. Right. Come this way. Come, let's have a look over here. Oh, that's interesting. I might. Uh, there's another pile of that over there. I'm going to show you something. We're going to do something really, really cool in a minute. So we're just on an open path by some houses again. Not too far away where we were from last week. We might actually go in there as well because there were so many exciting things to see. And this is just on a, on a um, just an open forest track, not too far from where I live. Oh, guys, come over here. Just in, sorry, I'm getting a bit excited. I get a bit excited about spring, because it's spring and it's amazing and there's life and there's flowers and it's all terrific. And look at these guys. Come and have a look at these. These are amazing. Oh, these are really cool. These are um, woolly saphosas or saphosas. Look at that. Now, Plants are so smart. They not all not all plants are huge, are they? So these guys, instead of just having the one flower because they're such small flowers, they're not going to attract any attention from bees and um, other pollinators. So they group lots of them together, a bit like the golden pea plant. And this one is so delicate and it feels really soft. It's almost like the uh, flannel flower that we've seen before, but this is different. It's so beautiful. There's so many different plants to be seeing. Now, even these grasses, look at the flower on this grass. And look how mean and lethal it is. Well, all these spikes. So this plant does not like being eaten. And the seeds from this particular plant can be uh, bashed down when it turns to seed, because these are the flowers. It's when it turns to seed, you can actually eat them. And the um, indigenous um, communities um, would, have, you, would use these for um, a natural uh, flower. And also, they're brilliant fire starters when they've gone over as well. Okay, so what else have we got here? Oh, we've got these upright guinea flowers here as well. These are beautiful. They're a bit raggedy taggedy. I thought they were actually centers, but these are actually um, these guys. These guys here, isn't that beautiful flower? Isn't that lovely? Um, these guys are um, uh, native. So like, they belong in Australia. They haven't been brought over to make someone's garden look pretty. But there's a thing you can do when you see um, flowers like that and you see like non-indigenous flowers. I'm going to show you something now that you can do with them because there's some sorrel over here, which isn't a native. Sorrel comes from, I think it comes from South Africa, all the way from South Africa. But people put it in their gardens because it looks pretty. Over here, look, it's a pink sorrel. Come have a look. It is really pretty, but it doesn't belong in the Australian bush. So... Come have a look at this. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before. See this? No, it's not just a piece of wood. Oh, goodness me. This is a homemade flower press. Now, you can buy these, but the, I had some recycled bits of wood and some paper and some bolts at home. And it's brilliant because what you can do, you can actually press the flowers and you can have, have the memory of these, this beautiful spring. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to very, very quickly, because I'm. you can make this better. I just made this um, with what I had at home. It's better when you've got little wing nuts that you can spin around. What if you don't want to make one? Well, you can buy them. You can buy them. Or you can actually just get some heavy books. Now, hands up who likes books. Love books. Books, brilliant. Books are the best. And when you've got books... They're quite heavy. So what you can do is put books on top of the flowers. Now, it's really, really simple. All you need is something. Oh, oh these, are from, these are from autumn. Look. So I press some flowers and some leaves. And when you press them, put them on some blotting paper, all you do 
it's so simple is you get some blotting paper and you lay them down on the wood and then you put some cardboard on it to give it a little bit of protection and then the, the two bits of wood you squeeze it together or the big heavy books they squeeze down and you can get all these beautiful keep all these beautiful things so these are from last autumn super super simple and they put those on there and then what i'm going to do i'm going to show you how to do it very very quickly so let me just choose oh and some gun leaves as well let's put i've got loads in here i forgot about these see that's the thing i'm going to tell you about a memory game as well what's that noise there's loads of birds around at the moment as well isn't there so what we can do i'm going to pick this because it's not a native and i'm going to place it face down onto the blotting paper like this put a couple there and a few of these and they're lovely leaves as well aren't they gorgeous and it's, you can put anything in them just put a few more what just kind of, like. what kind of things work best in a flower press um well anything really nothing too lumpy i don't think any like if a twig isn't going to work very well but um delicate flowers with delicate stems work the best so what we do i'm going to put those like that and then i'm going to get a piece of cardboard how long does it take, long does it, take? it takes about four weeks so not super long let me just move these there because i want to keep these i'm going to because you can make pictures with these and they're all beautiful so it takes about four weeks to do you can do it quicker someone was telling me the other day that you can actually do this with and put, putting them in a the microwave if you haven't got time so educators who have access to a microwave and some plants that you want to actually um put into a, a uh, get them dry very quickly you can do do it in a microwave apparently but i don't know how to do that i'd rather do it the old school way because i'm old now let me just this is the fiddly bit is actually putting it back on so what you do you get your little bolts and put that on there like that da, 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 da. let's put it on so it's always nice to do this actually at a table at home so let's just squeeze that on there like that this one over here like this so you can look at all these beautiful flowers whilst uh, you're doing that oh there's a coral one going oh no he's taking too long thanks mr coral one oh listen can you hear the frogs there's loads of frogs that's good we like that it means it's a healthy the healthy pond so once all the spots are back on that's it now that is pressing the flowers and it's going to dry them out and then we can take them out in about four weeks time and then you can make a nice picture with them or just keep them for um, remembering what a lovely time you had looking for spring flowers okay ready for some more of an adventure come on then let's go Oh, the smell in here is wonderful. So the, this flower here, this is the sweet spitorium and it smells absolutely gorgeous. Now, the reason why um, flowers have a scent um, is to attract pollinators. So it's attracting the bees. And I found out a brilliant thing about bees because bees are the best. Bees are so important. We've got to look after the bees, haven't we? Because they are in a bit of trouble because of all people using like pesticides and stuff because they don't like certain bugs in their garden. But we need all the bugs because the trees and plants need the bugs. Anyway, did you know bees remember human faces? They do. If they go and see you and they go like, oh, there's a Trevor. They'll go to somewhere and go, like, oh, I've just seen a Trevor. So like, where was a Trevor? He goes, oh, he was by that sweet Spitorum, the really nice one with all the nectar in it. Let's go there. And they find me and then they'll go and find a plant. And that's why when you've seen some movies about the bees, when you see the bees doing a the dance, they're going like, go over here, you go over here, you do a little chicken, you go over here. The bees around them are going, it's really, really bad dancing, Trevor. But I wouldn't be the one in the hype. Anyway, they then all follow that bee to the plant, to the flower that's got all the nectar in it 
and needs to be pollinated. So that's why it's um, got that smell. And they remember where to go to. It's absolutely amazing. See, look, we think we're good at remembering. And I'm rubbish at remembering stuff. So let's have a look over here. So ooh, we've got some really nice logs to uh, have, a, have a butcher's at. Oh, hang on. Listen. Can you hear that? Can you hear those frogs? How cool are they? I'll tell you what, we did this the other day. And we were going for a walk in the early morning. And we were up before the sunrise at dawn. And we went to hear the dawn chorus and it's a brilliant thing to do. If your mums and dads are up for it, you can get up really, really early and then you can hear all the birds all doing their morning song go, good morning everyone, it's awesome. And then guess what you can do? You could record that noise and then you could turn that into your wake up, get up alarm clock. Just like those noises. Now, that'd be fun. That's a nice way to wake up. Rather than <laughs> of a bell, that'd be rubbish. Because I don't like alarms. Now, let's have a look around here, see what we've got. Oh, 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 guys, 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 guys. Brilliant. Have a look at this. I was just about to look in the, under this log to see if there's anything here. But look what I found. <gasps> oh, now there's treasure. Look at that. <gasps> Does anybody know what feather that's from? Does anyone know? That's right. This is from a rainbow lorikeet. Now, all my wild kids in the UK, somebody was saying, I can't remember who it was, but they said they went to the zoo and they saw the um, rainbow lorikeets in the aviary. Well, here in Australia, New South Wales especially, they are in the wild. And when they shed their feathers like this, like this flying feather, they are treasure for me, and I'm going to keep that because I'm going to put that for a game. We're going to—I'm going to show you how to make. I'm going to put that in my. I'm not. In fact, I'm just going to put it in my pocket because that's a nicer place to put it. There we are. Just going to put it there. Oh wow, it's so noisy. That means there's a lot of, lot of busy busyness going on with all these frogs. That's awesome. I, lo I love hearing frogs. Now we'll, put, we'll walk through here earlier on just to see. Um, what we could find and when there wasn't so much noise going on. Now, it wasn't because the frogs weren't awake, because we met a lady who had just said she had taken a picture of a red-bellied black snake. <gasps> I know. So, through here is perfect snake country. And because it's spring, and because it's getting warmer, snakes are starting to come out because a lot of snakes don't do a lot of moving in the, um, in the winter and things like that, because it's too cold, because snakes are reptiles and they need the sun to warm up their blood so they can move around. We'll talk about reptiles another time. Anyway, so here, look, I remembered where I left it. Now, this is something you can do at home in your garden, or if you're just going for a walk, because I know it's rubbish because lockdown and everything, it's really rubbish, but you can always find interesting stuff like this feather for example and then you could play a memory game because all the plants and all the animals are a brilliant resource to do a remembering game and um, like the frogs who remember to go back to their pond after they've uh, um, hatched as, into tadpoles and they might have gone for a little meander they always go back to the same pond to lay their eggs did you know that so frogs are brilliant at remembering stuff Dogs are really good at remembering stuff, whoever's got a dog. And also, the best memory of uh, in the animal kingdom are uh, dolphins. Dolphins are really good as well. Oh, kookaburras. What else we got? I don't know if you can hear that on the mic. Best noise ever. Anyway, right, okay, I digress. So. Remember last week when I used the rock to show you how to use the burnt wood from the charcoal? Look, it's still here. And what we can do is, I found a few little bits and pieces. So we've got just a bit of a stick and we've got a seed. Oh, <laughs> look, I already had a lorikeet feather. Shows how much good my memory is, doesn't it? <laughs> so 
Now, playing the memory game is super, super fun because you can find the seeds, you can find the leaves, all like this. There's a she-oak seed. And this is from a, uh, a um, amber gum. They're really cool seeds. I like those. And a pine cone. I found a pine cone as well. Isn't that cool? I love that pine cone. Now, the, the way you play a memory game is like this. So I'm going to, you have a look at all the things on the rock and you look at it for about 30 seconds and then I'm going to cover it over. Oh, yeah, one more look. All right, have a quick look. And now I'm going to cover it over and now I'm going to move something. So look away. Are you ready to see, remember what it was? Can you remember what's missing? <gasps> Let's have a look. We've got the cone. We've got the feathers. We've got the seeds and the leaf. What's missing? That's right. We are missing the twig. Ha ha. A good game. And you can do anything you like. You could do it with seeds, you could do it with leaves, you could do it with flowers, you could do anything you like. But I think that's a really, really good game. And it helps you to remember stuff. So, I'm going to put these back in here now. Um, and then I'm going to remember to put them in my bag. I can't believe that I had two lorikeet feathers. <gasps> that is too funny. That is too funny. Now, let's put this back in my adventure bag. Yeah, well, who's that? Is that Geraldine and Carmen? Geraldine! I know! I'm old! Yeah, and don't you start either, Fred. Nice, real nice. Tough crowd again. Tough crowd again. Anyway, right. Let's put my sack in here so we don't leave any rubbish behind because that's the worst. Now! And then now the frogs have started laughing at me as well. Right, okay. Oh, look at all this sweet spatorium as well here. Look, beautiful. Oh, guys, golly, it smells so nice. Look at this. Now, come on, you're coming. Let's keep going through here. I'm going to show, we'll have a look at some, uh, under some logs here, see if there's anything we can find. Let's have a look. Oh, anything under that one? Oh, no, no, not there. Okay. Let's have a look through here. Oh, oh, look, there's a little skink, little lizard. Oh, he's just gone. He's just gone the other way. I'm going to try and show you him. It's the first one we've seen to this year. Can you see him? No, he's gone. He's long gone now. And there's the sap from the um, blood gun, the Angophora. See it all running down? Oh, did you hear that? <whistles> and uh, that's a, there was a, the, that was a whip bird. That's a really bad impression. But, and also the, that's a tock frog or the striped marsh frog, which is quite popular in um, um, Eastern Australia, especially in New South Wales around here. And this is the perfect environment for them. I mean, all through here, all through this marshy stuff. Oh, oh, it's really close. <gasps> hey, look, oh, he's gone. There's a little dragonfly or a little damselfly here, look. Come and have a look at this guy. He's flying around. There's two of them. I don't think you're going to be able to see them. They're a bit far away now. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. There he is. See him flying? I don't know if you can zoom in there, Rach. You can see him on there. Beautiful little electric blue. It's an absolutely stunning colour. Now, go through here for all this marshy stuff. You can hear him really loud now, that. But have you noticed all the frogs have gone quiet here? Can't hear any now. Now that sounds like someone hammering. That's a frog. Because not all frogs go ribbit, ribbit. Some frogs go ribbit, ribbit, but lots of frogs don't. And that's one of them. It's over there somewhere. Now. Oh, what have you found? Oh, this is awesome, Rach. Look at this. So this tree fern has got all the stages going on. So you've got the first stage here, look at that, where it all curls up. All these are gonna be the leaves very, very soon. Like this, on the stem here, and it all fells out, and wait till it curls all the way out to the tip. 
right, that, that's nearly at the very top. And then, look at this guy here, look, hello. Look at that, that's the one I was trying to show you earlier. In the light, they're electric blue. They're absolutely beautiful. They're amazing. Glorious little thing. He's having a little rest, he's just come out of the water. These guys, do you know some dragonflies live in the, underwater for five years? And then they come out, have a fly around, find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Ah, oh, he's gone. And then, um, that's it. They're beautiful things. Now, look at this one here. So, so we've got stage one, stage two, and this is stage three. Now, all of these leaves are just starting to uncurl. Isn't that beautiful? And then very, very soon, they're going to be as big as this one. Look how big that is. That's how big they grow. Phenomenal thing. I love them. And especially because they've been so, so smart and brilliant at surviving that these guys have been around since the dinosaurs. Oh, the, the frogs are back. Listen. They must know we're all right. Yep, see, it's Tony, Trevor and Rachel. See? Brilliant, isn't it? There's a good alarm call. Morning. Oh, oh, look, these are lovely. These are, these don't come out the other day. This is willow leaf hakia. Beautiful little flower. Again, look, see the lots and lots of flowers on the tree. And that is gonna turn into, um, get pollinated and then turn into these seeds. And these seeds pop open and you're gonna have other, other plants growing around here. Brilliant. Life going on and doing its amazing thing. Now, I've got something to show you here because I found these guys earlier because I've been ha I'm not having a lot of luck um, with finding insects or catching them. So, I found these guys and I thought I'd show you what they were in my little um, nature catcher here. Now, where are they? They haven't escaped, I hope. Oh no, there they are, look. I'm just gonna open up these two little beetles. Look at the color of these beetles. I'm just gonna pop them out onto my hand. See if they come out. Oh, there's someone giving a bit of a piggyback there. You see him? Let's see if I can pop them back onto the... Oh, there we go, look. Check them out. Let's see, I'll put the magnifier on them. Let's have a look. No, it's not working very well, is it? But they, even though they're beautiful and bronze coloured like that, they're still quite camouflaged against the wood and that means that they're uh, um, protected from other predators because they don't want to get eaten. Who wants to get eaten? Now, let's have a look under this branch here though, this fallen over tree. Because it's so wet here, you can see all of this stuff. This is all the wood that's been broken down by all the bugs. And you've got ants in here, you've got termites in here. What else have we got here? Let's have a look. Oh, there's little ants going on, flea beetles, spiders webs. <gasps> awesome. Now, let's have a turn at this one as well. See it, whoopsie. Turn it away from me. Remember you turn it away from you. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, he's big. Like one of those like um, cockroach beetle thingies. There you go. Look at them go. And don't, don't be scared of them because they're just, they're just um, veget vegetarians. So, and they just want to keep out of our way. And look, oh, look, there's a little leopard slug there. They're very amazing, they are. Uh, as far as slugs go, they're quite the, quite the prettiest thing. They've got the same markings as a snow leopard, which is amazing. Now, let's just gently put that one back that way. I've not knocked the beetles off. They're still giving each other a piggyback. And then just put those back there nice and gently. I've picked up my viewer as well. And now, let's go this way. Come on. So many things to see. Oh, look, there's been some wild kids been here. And they're building a den which is awesome. Now, let's have a look up through here. I'm gonna follow you. What have you found? Oh, look, what, another, you wanna have a look at this log as well? Oh, okay, come on then. Now, so, oh, this one's really interesting because the tree's fallen over. Like you can see all the roots here that have all fallen over and it's still holding a bit of earth. Now look at the top here though, look at these. All these holes. Now these holes have been made by um, something like a wasp or something like that and they burrow into it and they lay an egg in there 
and they put their bed and, and the baby hatches and then that gives them a nice bit of protection through the winter now let's open it away from me again oh it's all going on down here look at this wow so we've got ants what else have we got we've got a little bit of silver trail there so that means there might be some slugs let's have a look oh yeah look look oh there's loads of them so look these are leopard slugs see the spots that's why they're called leopard slugs and all the silvery stuff that's what they travel on they make, it's called mucus and they travel along that on their great big foot and it's a, an easy way for them to like move along and be as smooth as they can because they it'd hurt their bellies if they um, were going on along all the rough stuff and it makes them move as well we all know that slugs don't move fast but it helps them move along as quickly as they can it's almost like silver isn't it, isn't it magical isn't it wonderful <gasps> nature is just the best i love it now what else have we got in here? Oh, everybody's, everybody's, oh, look, oh, there's a hole there. I wonder what that hole holds. Hmm, that's a home to somebody. It might be something that we don't want to see or get near anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to gently roll this back so we're not hurting any of the animals. Oh, look, even the tiny little baby bug that grub down here. See that tiny guy? Let's see. See, if you take your time and have a look, you don't have to see all the, see, it's great when you see the big stuff, but also seeing the small stuff as well which is absolutely amazing. Love it. How successful has today been? It's been so good. We've seen so much stuff. And I've got to show you one more thing. Come with me, come with me, come with me. Come with me. Because these, you're not going to see, you don't get to see these very long. We've got to go over this causeway. Now, this, this last week, this had water running through it, didn't it? And now look at it. You've still got the plants all growing here and the like, little bits of earth that have fallen down. It's amazing how, how the plants are so resilient and they um, are hanging on in there, even in the big rain. Okay, now, come this way very, very quickly. Because just be, as we finished last, uh, just as we finished last week, I saw these flowers. And I've never seen it before in the, um, in, the, in the wild, in real life. I've seen them in a book and I thought, oh, they'd be really nice to see one day. And here they are. They're just over here. And they're beautiful. a whole different part of the forest it's very different look at these guys come here look 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 down here look at these they're an, like a type of orchid called ladies fingers and they don't they only come out in spring and um, they're only out for a very very short time and then you don't see them again because it, the leaves are so small aren't they beautiful very very special so i just thought at the end, I'd be able to show you these. I'm really glad I've been able to show you them because in a couple of weeks' time, they won't be here anymore. They'd have done their job. And they'll just be under the ground waiting for next spring when they all come up and pop up again. And hopefully, we'll get to see them again. Now, here's one thing that's very important. I'm not going to pick these to put in my um, flower press because you don't pick the native plants, especially when they're growing. If it was on the floor then maybe you'd put it in something to press it. But definitely do not pick the um, natives when they're alive because they're very, very rare and very special. Right then, what a day! How exciting has this adventure been? I hope you had fun. So, until next time, look out for each other. I know it's really tough at the moment, but we'll get, we're getting through it and you guys are being so awesome and special that we're just having fun every time we all get together. So, until next time, I'll see you really, really soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.